Hello, everybody, and welcome to Happenings in the Dearborn Public Schools. I'm David Mussinen, Director of Communications for the Dearborn Public Schools. That works out pretty convenient, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Joining me, as always, is Superintendent Dr. Glenn Malenko. Dr. Malenko, Glenn, how are you doing? Doing very well, David. Glad Great. to be here. You know, this is exciting. Uh, just I thought I'd bring this up before we got going with our guest here. But uh, for anyone who uh, may not get enough of us here on our show, uh, you know, and I don't, you know, I mean, I don't see how anybody could not. I mean, you can watch us on YouTube. I, I, agree, you can, I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're actually starting a little something where you can actually catch the superintendent live. And yes. uh, I will be at some of those as well. But mostly it's it's your gig. Uh, we are, uh, you're going to be doing a series of kind of just casual conversations uh, with parents and, and community members yeah. and staff yeah. uh, at a couple of schools, right? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And, and again, you're a partner in this, so. <laughs> but no, it's really just not a way to outreach to, to parents, uh, to staff, actually. Okay. Um, so what we're trying to do is go once a month to a different school. And I come in with some information on the strategic plan and some initiatives. But then, to be honest, I just allow people to answer, ask questions. You yeah. know, maybe they have some concerns, maybe some questions, uh, maybe some issues, whether it be, um, you know, education at the state level, the district level. And so we had a real good uh, meeting the other day at Fortson. Um, we've been at Duval, and so we have different locations that are going to go every month. And you don't have to be associated with that specific school to go and come and talk. So Great. our live show is open to anybody in the public, in the community. We welcome them, and we will, we will rotate that around in, even into next year. So we're going to see how that goes. And, and sometimes they may ask for something that we can do, sometimes we might not, but we're going to be responsive and just a way for people to dialogue in the district. So we are very excited. Um, so we are going live. I think we copyrighted it. To, yeah, we, we did. Okay, it is. Right. It's totally, yeah, to we, sure. we took care of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Right. Like Abbott and Costello. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, and you can check out uh, the superintendent's blog uh, where you we have a list of the schools yes. up there uh, or the district's website as well where we have a list of uh, upcoming schools for, this, for the remainder of this school year. And then, like I said, we'll expand that next Into year next trade, yeah. as well. And I think it's a great opportunity for, for parents to kind of sit down, and not just parents, community members community, as yeah. well, anyone, students, sit down and kind of just talk informal and ask those questions mm -hmm. to you that, uh, that, that they may not get the opportunity to ask. And again, like you said, uh, so if it's, for example, uh, when it was at Fortson, uh, if you went to William Ford, uh, elementary school, you could have went over to the Fortson yes, one. Yes. Or if you went to Duval, you could yeah, go to the Fortson. It, it, it yeah, doesn't absolutely. matter. It's, it's open welcome. to everybody at all yeah. times. And I know for the parents, there'll be refreshments and things there too. Great. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, and some people may get the idea that we're branching out into home improvement because we're talking <laughs> about restorative practices. Uh, but unlike HGTV, we are not going to be tearing down <laughs> houses here. Uh, restorative practices is, is, is actually something that takes place in all of our schools. And we've got a couple experts joining us today, uh, Dr. Violet Swedan and uh, Dr. Daryl Warner. Thank you both for joining us. Appreciate it. Good Thank afternoon. Thank you for having us. So, yeah, absolutely. So although we're not talking about today, it would be a good spin-off show, though. It would I, be. It wouldn't oh, be bad. No, I do so. have a hard hat. I do have a hard hat. Can we recruit you? Can you, oh, will you guys? Oh, my goodness. Not me. Not me. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, we're here for restorative practices. So, Dr. Swedan, what is restorative practices as we're speaking to the public here for the show? You know, can you explain what it is and what we're trying to do with it? Well, I mean, this is something that we as a district started looking at years ago. Um, and it's a way of ha having students take ownership for their behavior. Um, when a harm is committed, restorative practices is looking at the student as a person who can repair the harm. Okay. You know, as opposed to punishing a student, okay. um, you're pa repairing the harm. And then even aside from that, it's a way of building community within a classroom. Um, mm -hmm. where teachers and students can interact and get to know each other um, on a level where there's a sense of community and a sense of responsibility for each other. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Warner, I know, so you're involved as well. Um, can you, t what is your position within this? And I know Dr. Swedan, maybe, you know, both of you can kind of chime in as to what yeah. your role in the district we, is now. We both work uh, this particular school year as the um, student empowerment facilitators for the district. Okay. I have a, I've been assigned to four schools. She's assigned to four schools, and we, my primary, I said most of my work is here at Dearborn High School, and then I also work at um, River Oaks and Whitmore Bowles and uh, Woodworth uh, Middle School. And, and as Dr. Swidan had indicated, we're working closely with teachers 
and with students to help repair relationships uh, with um, students and their teachers and when there's conflict in classrooms and it's really had a pretty, uh, pretty I think we're on a roll to be honest mm -hmm. with you um, in terms of moving it forward, getting it moving and um, getting people on board. We have a lot of training going on in the mm -hmm. district. Um, mm -hmm. March 29th through the 31st we have um, uh, train, train the trainers mm -hmm. coming up with okay. several people being selected to train throughout the district and the more people that learn about it, the more people mm -hmm. that are, will be trained will continue to um, grow mm -hmm. restorative practice through the district mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll be at four more schools or eight more schools in years to come. Mm -hmm. And I know it's part of the district strategic plan for moving on this initiative to help yeah. our students reduce suspensions. I was actually at one of the trainings earlier in the year at Stout where you had a sure. facilitator mm -hmm. that came in, you were That's both right. there. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what did that entail? Over It was several days and, it was, and we actually had the Dearborn police were part of that, uh, some of the training if I recall. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. So yeah. it, it was a, that was an extensive four day training and um, we had, I think, about 40 people there. There were, you know, social workers, um, teachers, um, responsibility room um, okay. professionals. Um, so we had a spectrum of professionals in that room. And what that entailed um, was, you know, restorative isn't just looking at uh, reducing suspensions, but it's mm -hmm. really okay. looking at mm -hmm. building community and helping students mm -hmm. become critical thinkers. So that, you know, if you were to do something in the classroom that you shouldn't have done, my response shouldn't be, well, okay, now you're out of the classroom mm -hmm. and we're sending you home. But it should be, you know, where the possibly the whole classroom might sit down together and say, how did this affect my learning, mm -hmm. you know, your behavior? Okay. And then you can talk about how your behavior um, affected others and what you were going to do to make things better for the whole community. So in that four days, we were going through each of these steps of, you know, how do you build community? How do you respond to positive and negative behavior? How do you help students take initiative and take charge? Um, as well as, you know, if there's a suspension when a student comes back, ha having conferences so that the student is ready to come back um, to the classroom and feel welcomed in the classroom. And, you know, if it was a conflict with another student, then getting those two students together and making sure that that's been resolved. Because sometimes if you suspend and the student comes back and there isn't dialogue between all parties, then things tend to fester and they may blow up even bigger than they did mm -hmm. the first time. Mm -hmm. okay. So covering all of those, um, all of yeah. those things is okay. what we're focused on. Yeah, and, you know, to add on to that, going through the training, major emphasis was that restorative practice is not a program. Okay. This is not something which is just going to come uh, in the form of a, a textbook or a, a program per se, mm -hmm. but more a philosophical way of how to interact with students, how to um, embrace each other and understand that, hey, we may have a conflict, but we can't come back and resolve that conflict. Because as you know, our teachers have a very important role when working with 30, 29 to 30 students in the classroom, and they may have two or three that may be running amok, if you will. <laughs> and we then take that student and that teacher and repair that relationship so those students can go back in the classroom, teacher can do what they can do, mm -hmm. everyone's back to learning. May not be fast, it takes some time. Right. Mm -hmm. And we learned that through that training back in September. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it can be tedious, but it's definitely worth the, mm -hmm. worth the um, work. So it's more about a, a change in culture within Absolutely. the school, not so, like you said, Definitely. not just a program, That's right. Right. implement this, follow steps A, B, C, D. Right. This is really changing that Absolutely. culture. That's right. And I think that what's important about this and what I think is important for people to understand is that, you know, this isn't something unique to Dearborn. You can probably walk into any school in any district in, this, in the United States and you can find those two or three students. That's right. Mm -hmm who are creating those problems in that classroom That's right. uh, on, a, on a repeated basis. That's right. And just sending those kids out of the classroom, what good is that doing them? I, I mean, we're here to educate kids, That's not right. have them sit in the office, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to, to, during, for, the, for the day. And so if we can't get over that hump and figure out why they're doing that behavior. That's right. right. Then, then it, we're just it, the, the problem's going to continue, continue, continue. So this is yeah. really about building that culture to 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 stop that problem right. and and resolve 
what those issues are in the classroom and yeah. help those students so they can be mm -hmm. back in the classroom learning. Well, and I think, you know, one other thing it does is it helps students learn to communicate. Um, you know, I mean, just yesterday I walked in and a student had an issue with someone before school started. It was in the breakfast. They were, they were having breakfast. And so he hadn't started it, but it was an issue. And he had said that he thought someone reported it to the office. His friend had reported it. He said, this other student might get suspended. He said, but I don't know if I want that. He said, can we do a circle? So mm -hmm. he, even, he knows the lingo of let's do a circle. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to sit down with the student. He wanted to talk about what happened. Well, it turned out that it really was a misunderstanding. The mm -hmm. other student was goofing around through something, didn't really mean for it to go his way, but it did. Sure. Um, where the other student thought that he was being targeted. And so both of them were able to express their feelings, talk about it, and then figure out like how, okay, so I did this, how can I make things better? And this hadn't even gone to the office yet. I mean, he called me right when the bell mm -hmm. rang to come to me and say, I know it's gonna go to the office, but can we do a circle? Can you explain a circle? And how that is part of the program, or not program, but that's right, that's right, not a program. I caught it's myself. Not, that's I caught right. myself. Okay, if you weren't gonna catch yourself, I was gonna See? catch hey. you, my man. We're gonna take it. <laughs> well, listen, and you will. A circle can take on a number of different ways. Um, we have restorative circles where someone has been harmed, and then we try to get those people back together, the offender and the person who has been harmed, to discuss how things came about for that particular incident. And we use that time, that circle to, even before, there's a lot of legwork before, to prep because before the students come to a circle, especially the, uh, the offender and the victim, they have an option to actually join that circle because sometimes students aren't ready to get back together if they've had a conflict, right? But let's say we've worked with a group of students who've been involved in an incident and we've interviewed them we, we bring them together and talk about the incident and then talk about making amends and to resolve the conflict as well as improve the relationship or help the relationship. Because all too often in the past, we've had a student, two students who've gotten into a fight, right? They get suspended, they're out for three to five days. And guess what? They're back in the same building, sometimes in the same classroom. And there's animosity, there's anxiety, because maybe there's information thrown out there on social media about the continuation of he said this, she said that. And we try our best to squash that and bring that information, that type of information, in a circle to discuss it mm -hmm. so that students can move forward. And all too often now, when we do a circle, the conflict is over something very minuscule, mm -hmm. but it can magnify yeah, sure. into Absolutely. something that yeah. we think mm -hmm. is insurmountable, sure. but that intervention, if you will, that piece, the circle, really helps with that so students can go forward and move forward with their relationship and do well in the school day together. It takes time, but it is worth it. Well, I would think it would be amazing if people, like through that, that they would get, the, the, you know, when something small happens and people react, Right. And, and mm -hmm. does it get them to think more about mm -hmm. their you know, action yeah. and how it may impact that individual? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Restorative practices is a research-based philosophy that they've used. The university is called, is it called? Um, IRP. IRP. Mm -hmm. And they have created a set of questions. They call affective questions okay. that are specially designed to ask and for students and whoever's involved in that okay. circle to respond to, to get that affective connection so mm -hmm. they understand that when you said something to me, I was really hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes from there. But those affective question, questions are specifically designed to, to get to that issue. Well, we've used them with adults. And I, I think, you know, even with adults, because mm -hmm. they really, you're not, you're not judging anyone. And even the person who did harm, you're not saying, you know, what did you do? You know, like, there isn't this, right. what did you do, but what happened? You know, and, you know, and what were you thinking about at the time that this happened, and how did this affect, how do you think this affected this person? Um, and then what can you do to repair the harm? And so we've used them with adults, and sure. we, we've seen adults come back together mm -hmm. and say, look, I'm sorry, I didn't know that this had this effect on you. But once I thought about it, I can see how this had A, B, C effect. Um, so even with Adults, you know, it's, it's a great way, I think, just to run your life if you have that framework of I'm not going to blame you for what you do, but I want to understand 
what you you know what, right. what you're thinking about when you did it, and I want you to understand mm -hmm. how this impacted me. Right. Well, and I went to Smith during one of the uh, professional development sessions, mm -hmm. and you had circles going on there. I think mm -hmm. that, uh, Sue Nolan was there with you, and you were doing it, and it was for the training. Mm -hmm. But you could see that some people were having conversations. The staff now, this is staff, sure. as they were training for it. But it was kind of realizations of how people feel and maybe just right. listening to them. That's that's what I right. and I wasn't there for a long period of time, but I kind of did see that that yeah. circle drew them together. So yeah. Sue Nolan, Sue Nolan and Tara Haddad in our district are have gone through the IRP and they've done through they've gone through a number of okay. trainings where they're qualified to train others. Um, and they've done a great job of going into like you saw them yeah. at Smith and or, yeah, other buildings, Tara, yes. yeah. Yeah. right, and spreading it. Well, I, and. Like I said, I, I think it's just all about building that culture, you know, and at one point in time, uh, not too long ago, we were very focused on bullying, 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 Shit. and that mm -hmm. was like the kind of the key word. But really, it's, it's, it's more than just that, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to incorporate all of these types of programs that we do in mm -hmm. our schools, sure. restorative practices and PBIS and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and peer mediation and all sure. of these things really all kind of add up together to, to build that culture where, right. where, where we can eliminate those kinds of, of things that are disruptive to the educational process. You know, um, Glenn, uh, they did such a really nice job. I think we could go on vacation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh. think so. Yeah. I think uh, Dr. Soynette no, wants to be maybe one of the regulars. Okay. Well, a regular yeah. on the show? Yeah. I, I'm thinking. This is, we could, okay. She could fill in for me once in for, a while. For, yeah. for, this is my punishment, I think, Warner. being here. I <laughs> well, don't want to well, be here. As you, as, you, so, as you responded to her email, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you know, they're involved at the Student Advisory Council, the superintendent. One of the things that we've had an ongoing fun with Dr. Soida, and she's been a good sport about it, is that Not she really doesn't like sport. being right in front of the camera. So the students realize that, so whenever the students get an opportunity, they want to see her on the camera. Yeah. So it was just like, just don't resist us because it's just don't not going to work that's that right. way, right? That's right. And it's the students. It's not me. I, I'm not. I don't know. Are we going to have to do a circle and explain <laughs> yeah. how oh, that's yeah. making I, you feel? Or well, I did say that I needed a circle. <laughs> I'm sorry. With this team because I didn't want to be on and I felt right. like I was being coerced. Uh, so I feel like a circle has to come it's just, at some you point. You do such a great job. Yes, yes. She does. She's awesome. No, because so. you didn't get anyone else to do it. Well, thank you both for joining us. It was great information. Appreciate that and. Glenn, we'll uh, pack up our bags and hit the road and there we go. take the All show right, on the good. road. And, and then uh, until next time, uh, if, you're not, if you don't see us here uh, on, uh, on, on YouTube or on our district cable channel, you may see Glenn and I live right at your school. So check those uh, schedule out for that as well. As always, we thank you for taking a few moments of your time to uh, check out what is happening in the Dearborn Public Schools.